breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but it doesn't have to come so early. But if it came later, it would be lunch. Graham, it's not rocket science. Actually, cooking is science. It deals with chemistry, physics. Changing the channel. Yeah, check out the Burnt Toast Network. I like it well done. Oops. <laughs> <sighs> Eight o'clock, Cody. Wouldn't be a bad idea to leave for school a little early. It'll be hectic this morning with the new clock tower dedication. Sure thing, Dad. Morning, guys. Hey, Cody. What's that you have? A pocket watch. It was in the lost and found for a while, so Deputy Barney let me have it. But what if the actual owner comes looking for his or her misplaced bobble? Then I'll give it back. It looks so old. Definitely low tech. That's what I like about it. It reminds me of the past, when things were simpler. Cody's right. Technology is great when it can help, but sometimes it starts controlling us. We're headed down to the dedication, so how about a ride to school, son? Feels like we haven't talked in ages. No thanks, Dad. I want to walk. Hmm. Used to be you'd want to ride with me every morning. You kids grow up too fast. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time and keep you a little forever. Well, most of you. Hey, Frankie, wait up! Whoa! Watch where you're... Those two are sure in a hurry. Hi, Cody. Hello, Frankie. Hi, Mr. Harrison. Morning. Heading down to the clock dedication. <laughs> His rotor's bent. Mr. Harrison, watch out! A routine patrol with four bots and stasis. He's a little hook in the strangest of places. Earth was their home now, and in addition, Optimus Prime gave them this mission. Learn from the humans, serve and protect. Live in their world, earn their respect. Mr. Harrison's helipack is out of control above Mrs. Niederlander's. Let's go, team. He won't hold still. I'll make him come to you. That squirrel came out of nowhere. <laughs> you have to stop chasing those squirrels, Mr. Pettipaws. You caused a lot of trouble. Hey, Dad, looks like I might need that ride to school after all. You okay? I'm fine, thanks. Morning, class. We'll be taking a field trip today to see the dedication of the clock tower. <laughs> but first, a pop quiz. The new clock is run by a Magno Fusion power core. It'll sync up every time telling device in Griffin Rock. Not this one. All I have to do is wind it. Cody, watch winding is so 19th century. Huh, that squirrel really gets around. Good morning, friends and citizens. As the old saying goes, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> is this on? Yeah. But our town's timepiece, now with state-of-the-art technology, continuously tells perfect time 
down to the millisecond. It's, it's always, always right. right. Area closed for clock dedication. Please turn around, citizen. Citizens of Griffin Rock, I'm happy to present to you the newest addition to our already thriving town, the Mayor Lusky Clock Tower. <laughs> Mrs. Rubio? Reminder for future civic events. A few well-placed detour signs could prevent much trouble. My dedication is ruined! No one was hurt, and probably your most memorable speech ever. You're welcome. Are you okay, son? I'm fine, Dad. What? Ooh, I know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but does it have to come so early? <sighs> Was I dreaming? Graham. It is not rocket science. Actually, cooking is science. It deals with chemistry, physics. Changing the channel. Yeah, check out the Burnt Toast Network. I like it well done. Oops. <laughs> Eight o'clock, Cody. Wouldn't be a bad idea to leave for school a little early. It'll be- Hectic, because of the new clock tower dedication. Huh, you read my mind. Guess you know me pretty well, huh, son? Everything okay? I'm not sure. How can it be 8 o'clock again? Hey, Cody. It's my pocket watch, Boulder. I got it from Deputy Barney. I was just going to ask that. I know. Something weird is happening. I've experienced all this before. In a few seconds, my family will come down and my dad will ask me if I need a ride. Cody, you need a ride to school? No thanks, Dad. I'll walk. You kids grow up so fast. If only, only I, I could, could go, go back, back in time, time and keep, keep you a little forever. forever. Dad, I, I think I just did go back in time. Back in time? What exactly do you mean, Cody? You came from the future? No. Well, sort of. It's just, I've been through all of this before. You mean, like, deja vu? Deja who? <laughs> Deja vu. It's a French term. It means already seen. When you feel like something's happening that you already lived through before, it's called deja vu. Oh, I get it! No, I don't. Oh, like arguing with Heat Wave. Seems like that happens over and over. Unfortunately, that's real. It's not just a feeling. It's real events. Like toast burning, coffee spilling, even Dad telling me he wants to keep me little forever. Haha, <laughs> okay. If you've been through all this before, what are tonight's winning lots of bucks numbers? I don't know. It was only this morning, just the last hour or so. Well, next time you time travel, get some useful information, huh, bro? Actual time travel would have required some type of machine or portal. And there's nothing like that in this situation. You believe me, don't you, Dad? I believe you feel like you've been through all this. If you're worried, Cody, I think we should go talk to Doc Green. That's okay. I think it's all over now anyway. All this seems new. Danny's right. It was probably just deja vu. Or maybe even a dream. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Thanks, Dad. Cody, maybe you didn't really time travel. But just to be on the safe side, is there anything we should know that might help in the next hour? After all, all tools are helpful in keeping the town safe, even unproven psychic phenomena. Thanks for believing me, guys. Well, maybe you should just come with me. What's going on? Just a little preventive maintenance. Hang on to him, Chase, until Mr. Harrison flies by. 
He is flying pretty low. Just like Cody said he would. Yeah, weird. Oh, I guess everything's okay. Stopping Mr. Pettypaw seemed to take care of it. Cody, anything else we should know? Later, at the clock dedication, a toolbox is going to fall, and a fire hydrant is going to blow. We'll make sure they don't. Uh, you want to tell me what's going on? Um, later. After Timmy's books and the pop quiz. Pop quiz? Hey, Timmy, watch out! Don't turn that corner. You're going to... Never mind. Morning, class. We'll be taking a field trip today to see the dedication of the clock tower. Yeah! But first, a pop quiz. How do you know all this stuff? I've already been through this whole morning before. I think I traveled back in time. <gasps> that is so cool. We have to tell my dad. You actually believe me? Hello, we live in Griffin Rock. Let's finish the quiz, then ask Mr. Schulte if we can go see my dad. After all, it is a matter of town safety. Or it could be. Note to self, do not add red algae puree, try green kelp paste instead. Hi, Dad. Hello, you two. I'm testing a new energy drink. Uh, shouldn't you be in school? We have an emergency. Cody's experiencing the same morning all over again. We need to help him figure out what's going on. Fascinating. Tell me everything, Cody. Well, it started at breakfast. Then, 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 then Mrs. Rubio's car ran into the clock tower. And that's when I was sent back to the beginning of the morning. You seem to be experiencing a random distortion in the temporal continuum perhaps caused by a nucleo-electric anomaly. You're traveling back in time. That's what I thought, but how? And why only me? Could it have something to do with the clock tower being hit? It does run on magnofusion technology. Precisely what I was thinking. But Cody's right. We have to figure out why this time jump is happening only to him and not to the rest of us. Because I don't remember having this conversation before. Uh, or uh, did I? Hmm. Um, not with me. Well, we'd better head down to the clock tower dedication and warn the rescue team. If we can prevent the car from hitting the tower and damaging the magnofusion battery, Cody should be safe. Fire hydrant is secure. Oh, thanks. Forgot about that. Just keeping you safe, citizen. Is there anything else we should be aware of, Cody? Keep an eye out for Mrs. Rubio. A detour sign or two may help. Excellent idea. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Schulte. We took care of everything. Well, he's right on time. Wonder where he's going. Good morning, Griffin Rock. As the saying goes, even a broken clock... clock is right twice a day. Eh, <laughs> eh, but our town's timepiece, now with state-of-the-art technology, continuously tells perfect time, now a millisecond. I see Mrs. Rubio. She's headed this way. Should be fine, but track her just in case. To our already thriving town, the Mayor Lusky Clock Tower. <laughs> No sign of trouble. She's passing the crowd. Are you unharmed? Please drive carefully and avoid crowds. Don't know how you did it, Code, but you saved the day. Thanks for helping, guys, and for trusting me. Well, looks like you're safe. This time, nothing happened to the clock tower. I know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but... Does it have, have to, to come, come so, so early? early? <sighs> Round three. Dude, what are you 
you doing? Making sure you don't burn toast. I am insulted by that. I put out fires. I don't start them. Uh, thanks. I was just about to grab that. Don't worry, Dad. I won't be late, I don't need a ride, and yes, I'm growing up fast. Whoa. I was just going to... I know. But listen, we need to see Doc Green right now, with a stop at Mrs. Niederlander's first. I'll explain on the way. Don't add red algae puree. It'll make your energy drink bubble over. Use the green kelp paste instead. But how did you know I was... Same way he knew about Mr. Pettipaws and Mr. Harrison. He's psycho. I think you mean psychic, and he's not. Uh, seems like I've told this story a lot already, but... This morning, I came out for breakfast, and that's when I went back for the second time. So, the solution I suggested uh, before no longer makes sense. It must not be the car hitting the clock that's sending you back, but something else damaging the magnofusion battery. Cody, do you remember anything else going on with the clock? No, but I couldn't really see everything from where I was. Well, whatever it is, it always happens precisely at 9 a.m. Doc said the battery casing should be somewhere on the observation deck. Oh. oh nothing to be afraid of, Graham. It's not that high. It's not the height that bothers me. Mainly, it's just ladders. It's totally safe and a lot more fun than going up the stairs. Wait, there are stairs? <laughs> What is your rescue team doing? They're ruining my dedication. No, Mayor, they're saving your dedication. Just give your speech and I'm sure everyone will be so mesmerized they won't even notice my team. Ah, yes, yes, uh, you're right. <clears throat> Good morning, friends and citizens. As the old saying goes, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> Just a precaution, Mrs. Rubio. Would you mind parking here until the dedication is over? It's always right. I think I found the battery. That's the cannon pinion. Nuts! No, I'm sure it's the cannon. No, look! Nuts! That's it, Kate. That's the battery casing. Well, yeah. Good thing I'm here. Not sure where the peanuts came from, but. Cody, just found the battery. Actually, I found it. And everything looks fine. Perimeters are secure. Everything appears to be in order. Thanks, Chase. Maybe the problem is solved. Let's hope so. Why don't you go join your class? I'll explain things to your teacher. Where have you been? You missed a... Pop quiz, I know. Don't worry. I already took it. Twice. <laughs> That little guy sure is persistent. He runs up there oh, every time. The squirrel. Down to the millisecond. It's always right. Where's Cody going? I don't know. We already told him we handled everything. You, you're the one. Stop, stop. Get away from there. You're going to hurt yourself and the clock and... <sighs> Cody, are you all right? Where did you go? I'm at the top of the clock tower, Dad, and everything's fine. <laughs> Thanks, Heat Wave. Glad you had my back. Next time, stay on the safe side of the safety rail, okay? You okay, son? It worked! I'm still here! Mm, the squirrel chewing through the wire made the Magno Fusion battery momentarily surge. That caused the time jolt that kept sending Cody back. No matter how you tried to change things, Cody, the squirrel had the last word. But I still can't figure out why Cody was the only one affected. Me either. But low-tech or not, I'm sticking with my old-fashioned watch. You may have to wind it, but it won't yank you through time. Did you just get that? Yeah, I just started using it this morning. You don't think. 
Maybe I should have Daddy take a look at this. Morning, Cody. How are you doing? Happy to be here on this beautiful new day. It is a new day, right? It'd be hard to tell from Cade. He burns toast every morning. And yet your jokes always seem fresh. You know, Dad, I was thinking maybe you could drive me to school today so we can catch up. I'd like that, son. You were right, Cody. I just came from Doc's. This isn't an ordinary pocket watch. It contains the same type of crystal as the one from the time portal in the lab. That's why I was zapped back in time? Yep. The energy disruption in the clock tower battery interacted with this crystal. The watch became a mini time machine. And it took me back to the exact time I wound the watch. This came from Deputy Barney? From the Lost and Found. Dad, look! Well, now we know who lost it. Gone but not forgotten. Dr. Morocco. Ooh.